mandated, the, the state Supreme Court mandated that the governor and attorney general give written reasons as to why they weren't doing their job, and they left it at that. Well, now, here it goes before the Ninth Circuit. Ninth Circuit is looking at the standing issue. Well, two of the three judges raised the same question we raised before the state Supreme Court. And they said, basically, you know, one justice said, um, said, well, basically, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're asking, you're, if we say they don't have standing, then basically what we're declaring is that the Attorney General has the right to annul anything passed and voted on by the people in California via proposition, effectively. And then the other judge, from the, on the right perspective, the, right, the conservative perspective, said, yeah, basically, you're giving the Attorney General and the, and the Governor implicit veto authority over the, the, the voice of the voters of California. So we had two or three of them saying, you know, we cannot move forward with this unless we have a clear determination. We need a clear determination from the California Supreme Court as to whether or not the governor and attorney general have a responsibility to do this. And if not, whether or not um, they had, as this implicit veto is something that they feel that the state constitution is intended to, uh, to, to, to give these, these office holders, which is exactly what we raised. In fact, they cited our arguments. So it was very, I was very flattered by this. Actually, our, our chief counsel, Kevin Snyder, gets some credit for that. He did a great job. So, um, so now that's going back to them, they thought they could you know, throw our brief in, the, in the, the trash and be gone with it. But now they've got a, the Ninth Circuit knocking on their door. And, um, and we'll see where it goes. I think that uh, the issue of standing, one way or the other, I think that we'll be uh, fighting because of that, that understanding, the, the, the ludicrousy of allowing them veto authority over propositions which are there for we the people to act when our government officials are not, to give them the veto authority implicit, which is not even stated in the Constitution, would be a very damaging uh, to the, the, the whole respect of the democratic or excuse me, the Republican process of voting. So um, I'm going to make sure I'm correct on my terminology. But um, so I think the standing issue will inevitably be resolved. It may have to go to the state, the US Supreme Court in the end. If the Ninth Circuit rules adversely, I think Justice Kennedy might take it up. And then would be the merits, and uh, I think we'll have it heard on the merits for the Ninth Circuit. I think the Ninth Circuit could go either way, very easily. I think actually, I think they'll probably be adverse. Um, I think it'll be a two to one decision. It, this is my just my project, my own personal prediction. I may be wrong. If I had to predict it'd be two to one uh, against mm -hmm. Prop Eight, then it'd go to the U.S. Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court would do what they normally do with Ninth Circuit decisions, more than half the time, and reverse it. And um, and rule five to four, at least, that Prop 8 is constitutional, that it's okay for states to do crazy things like defining marriage as between a man and a woman, which they've done since well, before the United States even existed. So anyway, that's sort of, I think, a fast forward of what's, what's going to happen. And then we'll see activists try to go from the other side, try to bring it on as a future proposition, if not 2012, maybe 2014. And uh, although I think 2012 is, is something we can see easily. So uh, next, it will eventually uh, be decided by the Supreme Court. Yes, I think it will definitely be decided by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court. And the reason is because we can't let a, a mere issue of standing in the end have a, let a major issue of constitutionality of the institution of defining how we define marriage just to be left hanging. I think that uh, the Supreme Court would be very concerned about that. I think they would definitely make sure it's, it's, it's resolved. That's my opinion. And also, second, the attorney generals indicate that Obamacare uh, will eventually be decided by the U.S. Supreme Court. Oh, the attorney general, uh, yeah. Uh, what do you think? Well, oh, yeah, when do I think it's the Supreme Court? That's a good question. I met with the, uh, about a month ago, with the attorney general of Virginia. Great guy, sharp, really sharp. And he and I are on the same page. We think in the end, it will go to the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, he thinks it will be decided by the end of 2012, uh, which is not that which is pretty pretty quickly. I mean, from the from our court's perspective, things take a long time. Um, we waited two years just for the Ninth Circuit to come down with a decision on a God we trust. Two years after oral argument. So that would be really quick. But I think that they would uh, move on that pretty quickly because of the, uh, the, the huge uh, impact uh, of Obamacare. Um, and I think that they will, in the end, in my opinion, and this is as well, I think in the end they will rule that the individual mandate is unconstitutional. The only question is, are they going to throw out the rest of it as well? And if so, how much? So actually, I'm very excited. I'm very optimistic. Let me say one last thing in closing. And that is this. Uh, many people think that 2010 was just like 1994 or similar. There's a big difference, folks. And the difference is this. In 1994, 
People went to the polls. They voted. And then they went home. I'll see you when you get home. In 2010, we went to the polls. We voted. And we've learned never, ever to go home. And I believe because there's, there's many, many groups just like these, but not as large as successful and effective, I'll call them next, um, across the country that are committed to not going home. And we're of all the understanding that we cannot, that we will never again let those in Congress go unaccountable. And I'm just so excited. I'm excited about the future, and uh, I'm excited about where our nation's headed because our eyes are opened. We're now in action, and I'm, I'm really excited. So thank you very much, and God bless you. Please fill this out. Thank you so much. All right, thanks so much. Uh, what, a great, uh, what a great bunch of answers and uh, information. We'd like to present to you a special recognition of our gratitude and specific appreciation to Brad Davis, a distinguished guest speaker and dedicated to the service principles of American liberty. Thanks so much.